are super inspiring uh, examples, and I find it so fascinating that you know you can you know depending on the circumstances and the conditions that you're in, you're able to kind of transmute those values and then redesign it, you know, and basically create that new kind of experience. Really, it's a different product, really, for the, exactly. uh, for the for the user. Um, so how can we apply this? What are some concrete steps that we can take immediately? Yeah, so uh, I know I hit you with a lot of, uh, you know, what is experience design and what is ex what experience is, what is experience design, uh, what are some examples? Um, so I, this one's one slide and one slide only, so don't worry about too much flipping. Um, here are three things that I think are pretty easy to, well, uh, I, good place to start. And, and the first one is, is to determine what are the values that you're trying to transmit. Um, oftentimes we think about, um, you know, I need to deliver food, I make hamburgers, or I need to deliver this report. Um, it, it's a nice thing to step back and say, like, all right, our, our mission is to be smart, innovative, compassionate. All right, how do I infuse those values into the product or the service or the moment, you know, that I need to deliver? Um, it takes a little bit more time and effort, um, but what you realize is that, you uh, that, that is possible. And I think one of the, the interesting examples for me of this, when I have a simple, a very simple example and very relevant to, to um, the current moment with COVID, you've probably been a lot of places now where you have to, you know, wash your hands and there's a lot of, you know, different squeeze bottles of uh, sanitizer, um, you know, and, and safe and safety and health have taken like, you know, priority seat in a lot of people, uh, organizational values and parts of the experience. Problem is they get slapped on kind of at the front or at the back. Um, you know, we're all rushing to just make things safe and health, which is great. Um, but over time, we want to ask, what is that doing to the experience? Uh, in restaurants, it, it, it's really killing it. You see these future of restaurant uh, articles that say, here's the future of restaurants. We're all wearing masks and distance and, you know, it's all sanitized. And I say, that's not the future because that's not a future where anyone's going to go out to a restaurant. That's a totally different experience. And if that's the experience, I want to stay home, right? And so what we need to do is we need to figure out how do we maintain that safety and health, but evolve it into an experience that's still extraordinary, exceptional, or makes me want to leave my house. And uh, an example, one simple example is like, how do I sterilize my hands? Um, do I need to use a squeeze bottle or like some Japanese restaurants or on the airlines, they do this where they hand you the, the, the warm steamed towel, um, you know, that has some uh, sanitizing uh, soap in it. You know, it's a different experience. You're, you have your towel, it feels really nice. So that's one way to accomplish the same goal, but in a very different way that transmits different values in a very simple way. Uh, number two is develop that journey map. This is simply to, to understand, like we said, experiences are made up of many moments. And so to, to think about every, anything and everything that you're doing has a beginning, uh, an end, and some uh, middle steps or moments inside of it. And so if you can think about that, even handing, man, even handing a report to your boss uh, has a beginning and <laughs> a middle and end. And, and, and so when you choose to go up or what you say before or how you hand it to them, you know, how you exit, all has an impact uh, on how it's delivered. Um, and, and, and so the journey map just helps you kind of deconstruct that and to think in moments. And I think the second thing it does, it helps you understand that moments are connected and they influence each other. So one moment kind of crashes into the next and it will have an influence. It, it presets someone for the next uh, moment. And the third tool is uh, design thinking, which we're not covering a whole lot here, but to say that um, when it comes to how we design these moments, design thinking is a great tool because design thinking says two things. One, there's more than one solution to just about every single problem. And so if you think there's only one way to do it, uh, design thinking is a great way to expand like uh, how how many different ways there are to do it um, often there's a lot and, and then to to choose one or two of those the most promising and, and to quickly test them and to try to get that into a real world situation that you can test to get actual feedback uh, versus making an assumption in your brain about what will work or what won't um, and so yeah so I think I'll stop there but I think those are three ways to get started um, right away.